Ladies and gentlemen, Kiri Kama. But please, call me Kiri. I feel pretty, oh so pretty. I feel pretty and witty and bright. And I pity any girl who isn't me for now. Good singer, that girl. That was a fairly nerve-wracking one. I wasn't getting married. That was the best thing. Kiri was magnificent. Arthur Kennedy from Burton on Trent expresses what so many of you feel. She's one of the greatest sopranos of modern times. It's live in the studio, Kiri Takanoa. There's a dream I feel so rare, so real. All the world in unity. I love to see that all that old footage. If I look back, what you have is snippets of, of my life, I suppose. My first impressions of coming down the East End was that people were always talking, and they obviously all knew each other, and they were very friendly, and they always asked how I was. I didn't know them. And so I was so shy, I wondered why they, they would talk to me. And I would go walk along the markets, there were lots of stalls and things there with the fruit and the daily produce. I always remember the ladies with the beehive hairdos, with their shopping bags full of potatoes and things. And the gentlemen would call out, hello, darling, how are you? Uh, things like that. It was, it was great fun. Well, everyone knows this as the Troxy in the East End on Commercial Road, but I only knew it as the London Opera Centre, and it's the reason why I came to England. This building played a very, very important part in the beginning of my life as an opera singer. In fear and trembling, I came through those doors in 1966. I was a terrified little bunny rabbit, and I wanted to go back home for Christmas because I was so lonely. Well, it's about um, 20 years since I've been to this place, um, <laughs> the old Troxy, and I can't imagine what it's going to look like. <laughs> My gosh! It's actually more beautiful than I remember because it's all beautifully restored. Down here is where we used to rehearse The Marriage of Figaro. This was the first big opportunity I had to do a major, major role. I suppose it was actually the only role that I knew, so I was rather stuck with the Countess of the Marriage of Figaro. And after that, I had to start uh, learning all sorts of other roles. And so it was the sort of real bouncing board for me to start onto an international career. It's a pleasure to present a new and exciting talent on my show, and tonight we have a young soprano from the Covent Garden Opera Company, for whom I predict a great future. Here to sing Puccini's lovely aria, Chi il bel sogno di Daretta, is a beautiful Kiri Tikanawa.
I started swimming when I was back in New Zealand at a very young age. My mother encouraged me. I was taught by a nun and I went in for many competitions and I ended up leaving New Zealand when I was 21 to study, I thought, correctly and properly in England. A natural, laughing girl singing a folk song of her people and happy out of doors. Yet she is one of the most famous New Zealanders in the country's history. Kerry, we know that you're from New Zealand and we know you're of Maori descent. But will you clear up for us what perhaps we don't know about your origins? Well, when I was very, very young, about five weeks old, I was, according to my mother, brought to a doorstep and a darling lady said, would you like a little baby? And she'd found out from the authorities that, um, that my mother was looking to adopt a baby. She said, no, no, I don't, I don't want a baby. No, no, that's not right sort of thing. Um, I want a little boy. And so the lady went away. And then when she came back again, which was three months later, and the same baby, but slightly uh, grown up, it seemed, you know, a few more weeks older, um, my mother said, well, it must be meant to be ours. So she sort of went through the motions. And she said, yes, I'll take it. I had so much love from my parents. They gave me everything they could possibly give me. I see I'm an open air girl. I'm not really a city girl. I was brought up in the country, spent my time on farms and things. I just love animals. Um, I just love sort of nature itself. I love to get back to reality quite often. It's nice. was the most wonderful, wonderful colleague. I think of all the tenants that I worked with, I think he was the most agreeable and a beautiful voice. You know, you're always sort of a, you're amazed by this gorgeous voice coming out. Uh, but he was lovely, great, great friend. And just, we, we, we sang together many, many, many times. <laughs> So you sing with Domingo, so what, you know, <laughs> he sings with me. Well, 
Here we are at uh, Wentworth in Surrey, one of the world's most famous golf courses, scene of many a classic encounter in its time, and here we have another one for you just at this moment. Well, not bad for a beginner. And that's a sweet one, right up the middle of the fairway. I think he was better at football than golf. wonderful but his conducting was a little bit you always thought mm, <laughs> come on Placido get on with it because he was conducting like a singer and you sort of you couldn't always figure it out sometimes one thing I, I don't know all that much about opera but learning about it is that uh, opera singers tend to get better and better and better as they get older and people say that you've already got marvelous technique you've got a very beautiful voice um, what else is there left for you to do what are you striving for to make yourself closer to perfection. All I'm possible. trying to do is do the best I can for the, with the music that is given me uh, and the music that I choose, which is Mozart and Strauss, basically. I touch on Verdi and I touch on Puccini, but I don't uh, ever think that I will be one of those singers. I would like very much to specialise in Mozart and Strauss. It's like that. I mean, you wouldn't ever do Wagner, for example. I don't think so. I don't think my voice would stand it. Why not? What would happen? Well, I think Crap. it would all snap. Gosh, it's a painful. very, it's my, my voice happens to be a very delicate one. It's very highly tuned, as my singing teacher says, that most singers can get up and just sing, but it can go croaky on me and if I'm learning. As it did about two weeks ago, I was learning, and oh, it, it just went, Ugh, and I thought, how dare it, not now. Not when I need you, don't let me down now. And it you talk did. to your voice, do you, as mm, if it was a separate mm. individual? Yes, it's a bit like playing golf. You know, you have good days and bad days. <laughs> I don't think it's at all like playing golf, is it? It's exactly like playing golf, really. Really? Yes. If you don't all do all the right things, uh, it all goes sour on you.
think that was a fairly nerve-wracking one, yes, because there was so much involved. I wasn't getting married, that was the best thing. I only had to do it once, and I had to do it exactly at a certain time. It was only going to last five or six minutes, and I, as long as I got that through of that one, that's all I cared about. Ladies and gentlemen, Kiri Kama. Please, call me Kiri. I must say that it was a shock when suddenly my High Commissioner came to me and said, uh, Prince Charles would like to make you a dame. And I said, what? You're joking. And of course, I remember it being on the news, they say, well, you know, she's not even in it's sort of international who's who. And I accepted because I was very thrilled to do it. I love to see that all that old footage. Some of the performances I did on television, hopefully they they worked, you know, and it, it was a progression into the next part of my career, which developed and developed and developed. But what you have at the moment is is snippets of, of my life, I suppose.
that if I wasn't challenged, I'd, I'd be a bit lazy. I, I didn't want to be lazy in any of it because I know that being lazy, you'd get complacent and then the music sort of sags away and, and then you just get lazy within it and you don't have that drive. frightened by the fact that you have achieved so much success at such a relatively young age? Well, well yes. <laughs> you put it, why didn't I say that? I mean, you th I'm terrified. It's too soon, it's too, I'm too young. Someone said to me just lately, it was really, really sweet, that, you know, Kiri, if you put your head above the horizon, someone's going to shoot it down.
the wear and tear with the operatic music is quite severe. And so I, I decided to do uh, um, concerts to, to try and keep my voice in a good shape. Well, thank you for asking me. That was nice and short, anyway. <laughs> what, what, what was that? Well, it was a funny little song, and it, it really means on the short side of it. Um, unlucky is the man who doesn't have a wife, and equally unlucky is the man who does have a wife. <laughs> Shrewd thinking by the Auvergnois, I would have thought. <laughs> our all-star cast the mighty soprani Dame Kiri Tekalawa. Where are they? That's the wrong lady. There she is. I remember the very first rehearsal we did. Yeah, and they said, oh, he, he, he won't start the rehearsal. He won't start. And I said, why not? Got, they said, because he's nervous. I feel pretty, oh, so pretty. I feel pretty and witty and bright And I pity any girl who isn't me for now I feel charming, oh so charming It's alarming, how oh, charming I feel I'm so pretty that I hardly can believe I'm real Such a pretty dress, such a pretty smile, such a pretty me. I feel stunning, I'm entrancing, feel like running and dancing for joy. He's a man of many emotions, you know, ups and downs and overs, and, and to see that coming from a conductor when conductors are very serious people. You see a tired, aging maestro, where yesterday you saw a tired, aging maestro, but less tired, less aging. But to see it, this sort of animal working is, is quite amazing. You can see his moods from time to time. You see his, his frustrations, his happiness, his glee, his, his wanting to perform to people. Um, that's the thing that makes the man interesting. One is constantly trying to read him, but really he's on another planet. He's on a planet that no one can touch. The man is just brilliant.
very lovely. But the only thing is, I just had to say to him, excuse me, maestro, but I said, you have got to stop smoking. I cannot breathe anymore. And he smoked through the whole of the rehearsals. It was horrible. I didn't shout or anything. I just said, you have got to stop smoking. I can't do, well, I can't do this anymore. I've known Roger for very many, many years, and he, I think, is, is a great accompanist, a great colleague, and great support. Fun to be on tour with because you need to have someone to talk to as well when you're a bit lonely in sort of hotel rooms and things. Duparc's L'Invitation au Voyage, sung by Kirite Kanawa, accompanied by Roger Vignoles. You haven't always been a classical singer. You can't start as a classical singer. You must have was a kid. <laughs> Presumably that's more or less as you sang. Well, uh, that's, yes, that's what I did naturally. Um, I was just given the opportunity to sing classical music only and became an opera singer and, and classical singer and still am. I didn't change. I was just given an opportunity to have a little diversion. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. I think she's got it. I think she's got it. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. My God, she's got it. My God, she's got it. Kiri was magnificent. Jeremy was magnificent. Arthur Kennedy from Burton on Trent expresses what so many of you feel. An evening with Kiri Takanawa with songs from My Fair Lady. A superb production which brought all the atmosphere straight into my living room. This was a classic in entertainment. And Arthur sums up the whole program by exclaiming, I could have watched all night. I'll see you next week and leave you in the company of Kiri. Oh, and by the way, male viewers, some more letters, please. Good night. I knew somehow I was devoted to music and music had to be my life and I was never ever allowed to desert it and if I deserted I felt that if I deserted music then I, I had I had lost my reason for living almost. Kiri Takanua has worked with many of the world's great accompanists, the professionals who specialize in playing for singers. Now she's working with a conductor with whom she's made many opera recordings but not before done leader. I must say that is the highlight of my career, I truly say that. It's a totally different experience because an accompanist is sort of supports you, but I actually feel as though Sir George has got, he's actually got more control over all of that. His control of the fingers, the inter almost, he almost sings it for me, and it's never quite good enough, is it? <laughs> no, it's true.
of my people, the Ngati Manupoto. Lying in the heart of the North Island, it forms part of the King Country province. During the wars of the 1860s, thousands of Maori lives were lost trying to protect this land. To we Maori people, without land, there is no soul, no mana. Here in the Manupoto are my ancestors. In Gisborne, I wanted to show my children the old family home where I was brought up. And all that's left now is this parking lot. Whenever I could, I'd escape to the beach at the bottom of our road and run round to the wharf for mussels or go swimming with my friends. But I never saw this. Racehorses training in the surf. I returned to this beach after 20 years of not visiting it is rather sad but also very rewarding because my life has changed quite considerably over the last 20 years and I find to come back here it hasn't changed and it's rather wonderful that throughout our life can we go back somewhere and say you haven't changed at all. How are the auditions going? Very good. Just you sit tight there, you want. Next, please.
way, way back, you know, you had to get an audition for BBC to, to, to perform on the BBC. And more often than not, some of the greatest singers were turned down by the BBC. But if you got a job and it included a, a broadcast, basically, that was your audition. Very, very, very nice. Absolutely lovely. Not quite Tina Turner, but, uh, <laughs> but coming along nicely. It's a big thrill seeing these little black dots turn into actual beautiful notes and just seeing how she controls her voice, you know. She doesn't vibrate every single note like some singers. She'll go, and just put a little vibrato on the end, you go, oh, she's good. She's good. It was a very nice time, very exciting time. Um, working with someone as, as great as Paul McCartney and all the other singers, and, and, and a new piece, a new composition, which is quite often you get, don't get a composition which is so musical. Something I always wanted to do, I don't know why, it was, it was stupid, I suppose, but I always found it was something that um, not everybody could do, and, and I, I think I got there. She's one of the greatest sopranos of modern times. It's live in the studio, Kiri Takanoa.
It's an amazing coming together of the world. The world watches it. It just encourages young people to enjoy classical music, and that's our next audience, which is so important, you know.
You do have those wonderful performances with fabulous colleagues and making great music and I think that's what it's all about. It's all about the joy of being able to sing and perform at the highest possible level and I must say that um, it is for the sheer love of music that I say to you, if you want to be an opera singer and you have these opportunities then you have to go for it.